Good morning, or afternoon, or evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are. I'm back in the kitchen, stroke galley, because I'm on a boat. A few weeks ago, I asked you great people out there, what recipes would you like to see me cook? Well, I've chosen a couple out of the responses, which I want to do. The first one being what I'm going to do today, which is meatballs, um, my sort of twist on the Italian style meatballs, not Swedish meatballs, which are quite a bit different. A bit of a twist, as I say, because I don't use all the ingredients, perhaps we should go in there. One thing I am going to miss out today is putting even some Parmesan cheese in there or something like that, a good hard Italian cheese into my meatballs because I don't have any and I wasn't going to go and buy a block of Parmesan cheese just to make this recipe. It's quite expensive and I decided I didn't need it. They're very good without it. It just really makes them more Italian. So let's look at the ingredients, what we're going to make our meatballs with, first of all. And then we'll look at the ingredients, what we're going to make our sauce with. So here are ingredients for making our meatballs. The seasonings are uh, some salt, which we've got a job to see probably on the camera, black pepper, some garlic granules. I'm using garlic granules in the meatballs. I think it works better than actually minced garlic. A teaspoonful and a half of uh, mixed herbs or Italian seasoning. I have mixed herbs on the boat, so I'm using mixed herbs. And normally, in the, if I was to make this in the summertime, I'd use fresh parsley out the garden. Well, this is parsley, which I dried earlier on, or late last summer. But it's dried, and I don't, I didn't have any uh, fresh. It's about a teaspoonful and a little, a heap teaspoonful of parsley, dried parsley. And just give it a little bit of a flavour lift. About a quarter of a teaspoonful of chilli powder. I have 500 grams of ground pork and 500 grams of ground beef or minced, whichever you want to call it. One egg. And that's two slices of brown bread or wholemeal bread or whatever you want to call it. I ground up in the uh, food processor. It's just regular bread crumbs. I'm not sure if I'm going to be using all of those yet. I think it's a little bit too much there. But we'll see as it mixes in. And if it goes too dry, I will add a touch of water to it. But we'll see how it goes. I think when the last time I looked up a recipe for this, it says half a cup or a cup of breadcrumbs. And I think there's a bit more than a cup of breadcrumbs there. But we'll, we'll, we'll play it by ear. What? Well, so I don't use the ducks release, I'm sure. So let's get on with the mixing. So I have my large mixing bowl here. Oh, and by the way, carry on watching this uh, episode if you want to know what beer I'm going to use in the next beer stream next week. So next Wednesday at 8pm there's going to be a new beer stream and I'll show you what beers I'm using uh, later on after I've sort of done a bit of this. I've got to decide yet which ones I'm going to do. So I'm just opening up here my mints. And the support mints going in. This will probably make enough meatballs for about six people, but uh, you buy a pack of whatever they sell in the shop, don't you? Quantity wise. And there goes my beef mince. It's a cheap beef mince, it's quite fatty, which I actually quite like. I think it cooks out, you know, when you fry them off, it's, it, they cook in their own fat. I rather like that. So we'll get rid of those. I'm just going to break these up with my hands and mix them together so the, the meat's basically mixed together there's two types of meat you can use all pork or you can use all beef or you can use lamb you can use all sorts to make this with it's entirely up to you normally don't use a piece of paper though that's um that's optional by the way leaving the paper in I'm just going to make sure that's all broken down and reasonably mixed together you don't want to put this into a food processor or anything like that to mix it. It breaks up the mince pieces too much. Then you end up with more like slime rather than lumps of meat. And if you don't like getting your hands mucky and you don't like mixing raw meat with your hands, put some gloves on or use a wooden spoon or something. 
what that's going to do that's basically mixed together there now i'm going to add all my herbs and spices so let's try and shake them a bit mixing them all over the place i'm just going to lightly mix that in now i'm going to add about half of the breadcrumbs These are fresh breadcrumbs, not dried. I made them out of two slices of bread. And now I'm gonna add the egg. Now I'm gonna mix the egg before I put it in. So I'm in a bowl here, I'm gonna crack my egg. I'm just gonna lightly fork that through. I'm just going to pour that now straight over the top. I'm just going to fork that in to start off with. It's basically a binding agent. And we're going to add some more breadcrumbs. Actually, I'm going to add them all. Yeah, that's fine. There's plenty wet enough. I don't need to add any milk or water. I can never add milk when I'm on the boat because I don't keep milk on the boat. I don't like milk, so. But sometimes it goes a bit dry, especially if you're using fresh breadcrumbs. Uh, sorry, if you're using dried breadcrumbs, it can go a bit dry. So that's basically my meatballs mixed up there, or the mixture anyway. Now we've got to make the meatballs. So using a tablespoon, I'm just going to basically take a, a tablespoon full of meat. Now, if they stick to your hands, just grease your hands lightly or whatever with some uh, olive oil or something like that. It stops them sticking to your hands, but these doesn't seem to be sticking. And I'm just going to place these into the frying pan or skillets. You can bake these in the oven. It works quite well by baking them in the oven. But um, as I told you last recipe, last time I was cooking, my oven's not working. So it's not an option for me. I only want to keep the meatballs roughly the same sort of size because they cook that way evenly. Well, I'm going to continue making my meatballs. I'm going to turn the camera off. Meanwhile, um, it's pointless me showing you how to make about 50 meatballs. Uh, far too much here. I'm going to probably cook it all and then end up by having to freeze it to have meatballs in the next six weeks. But uh, we'll see how it goes. Well, that's my meatballs done, ready in the pan to fry off. I'm going to let them warm up fractionally first because I let the meat come a little bit up towards room temperature before cooking them. It's very cold at the moment. I still have that much left over as well. I might just put that in a baggie and throw it in the freezer and use it another time. I could always make it into patties and sort of have like meatball patties, uh, you know, uh, burgers sort of thing. That always works quite well as well. So I'm not going to start frying those yet. Let's get on and make the sauce. Well, I've already made the breadcrumbs in uh, my food processor. I'm not going to worry about the few little crumbs left in there. It can be mixed into the sauce and it's not going to hurt. So here we go. So I've got some here, some garlic. I'm just going to break it up a little bit more. Put that in. And I have an onion. You can dice this all finely yourself. But I'm just cheating a bit here. And I'm going to use the food processor to make it a little bit quicker. To break it down. It's not going to take much. I don't want it into a paste or anything i just want a small pieces so that goes in there Put it on and i'm just going to pulse it that should work fine small pieces without actually being sort of uh made into a paste Right, that can go straight into my saucepan now.
I don't know how difficult this is trying to do this so you sort of keep it in camera shot and then you don't know if you are or not because you've got to look what you're doing and everything but we hope we're close leave that out of the way so there we have the onion in there and the garlic now we're going to this is quite a for, a fixed sort of sauce I'm going to make and I'm going to now start adding the other ingredients I have one heaped spoonful of mixed herbs or Italian seasoning or herbs problem solved would work. And once again, I'm going to add some parsley as well. I'm not going to add any salt at this point. I'm going to taste it later and see what salt to add because I'm going to use some um, things which might already contain salt in them when I make this. So, good grind of pepper. As you probably know from previous episodes, I like my pepper. I had one uh, packet or box or whatever you want to call it of uh, passata, which is just um, sieved tomatoes, basically. Um, I used to use, when I was in the US, I used to buy crushed tomatoes and use basically the same thing. Actually, I don't know why I had that yet. I want to, I'm getting ahead of myself here, actually. I want to fry the onions off slightly, first of all. So I'm going to get those on the stove. My meatballs are ready to go there. Add some olive oil. I don't know about a tablespoon probably. Light my gas. I'm use the same spoon I just got the onion out with, the same thing. Just melt those off a bit. And they're just about done now. I just uh, I don't want to particularly brown them, I just want to make them soft. Which they're just about there now quite nicely. So in goes this. I'm just gonna wash that out a bit. Now I'm using tomato puree here. I'm gonna use about two teaspoonfuls of tomato puree. Now if in the US and using one of those little cans of tomato paste, you're probably going to want about two tablespoons. This is a lot more concentrated. There's one. Two, something like that. It come clean off the spoon, look. And to help balance out the acidity of the tomatoes, About half a teaspoonful of sugar. I'm going to get that cooking. I'm going to get this hot and bring it to a, a simmer point. And I'm going to put it on my stove and then cook it through for probably about an hour or so on the stove, just simmering away. So I save my gas. I'm going to finish it off on the stove. I'm just going to taste it now and see what salt I need to add. Definitely needs some salt. I'm going to add a bit of a teaspoonful. Let's mix that salt in and I'll taste it again. I, was, I used fine sea salt there so it dissolved quite quickly. Let's taste it again. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. Good flavour. It's not even cooked yet. So I'm going to go and put that on the stove. You've seen me put things on the stove before, so I'm not going to film it. I'm going to leave the camera set here. And that can go and simmer away now for an hour or so. All right, so now to get on with the uh, main event, shall we say. Bring my meatballs in. Put them on the stove here. I'm using the medium to low heat. I haven't added any fat to that you might have seen, but remember the uh, beef mince, or ground beef I used was 25% fat but the turkey was only 5% fat and I think there's going to be enough fat in there to cook them in we'll see if they start sticking too much I will add a little bit of olive oil right, they're starting to fry away quite nicely and I see some fat coming out from underneath them so I don't need to add any fat the rest of the leftover I've just marked the bag up meatball 
in today's date and I'm gonna put it in the freezer. I'm gonna to start to turn these now. Just ground off nicely there. You've got too many in the pan really, just don't know where to move them to. As you can see they're not sticking. Let's keep one out. Take one away, then I've got somewhere to turn them over to. Right, we'll leave those for a bit longer again there. Time to turn them again. Once again, I'm going to take one out to be somewhere to turn to. I'm using the edge of the pan here so I can stand them up on edge a bit easier. So I can sort of cut them all the way around. Of course, they're shrinking a little bit as they cook. Right, we'll leave them again for a... I've just turned them again. Now, I told you at the beginning that I was going to tell you what beers we're going to have next week in the beer stream. Well, here we go. So the first beer I'm going to have is Tinsel Toes, which is a Christmas ale at 4.4% alcohol. I decided it's time to do the Christmas beers before we get too far after Christmas. The next one is called Santa's Porter, and that is 4.9% alcohol from the Millstone Brewery. And the other one is Beer Humbug. It's a dark Christmas ale, and that is from the Pleasantry Brewery in Nottinghamshire. So if you want to play along next week on the beer stream, they're the beers I'm guessing. So if you want to get the same beers in and taste them and drink them as I do, that's what we're going for. So I'll see you next week on those. So that's enough cooking of the meatballs right now. I think they'll cook probably right through, but I'm going to take them out and put them onto a paper towel to let them drain off a little bit before we add them to our sauce. As you can see, they're quite nicely browned off here. All seared in. So there we go. I'm going to leave those to rest for a little bit before I add them to the sauce. Right, my... Sauce is uh, nice and hot. It's been cooking for about an hour. See the steam coming off of there? So we're going to add the meatballs. They're drained off now. Get them off the paper before they actually stick to the paper as the uh, fat hardens. Now a lot of people wouldn't like using 25% fat beef mince. I do because as you saw, I fried them off in their own fat. That's all flavour. It's all flavour being added into the meatballs. I'm hoping to get these in one layer in here. I'm just about to squeeze them all in. There we go. And that's going to go back on the stove uh, until I decide they're cooked. Which could be quite a while. Well, the meatballs are just about ready. So I'm just heating up some water here. going to put some salt on it. Now anyone that knows me will know that I'm not particularly a pasta fan. If I was making this just for myself I probably wouldn't even make any pasta at all. Well I am making it for myself but um, I'm doing it to show what I do normally. I'm not going to go to all the effort of making pasta. So I'm using dried pasta, dried spaghetti. I'm certainly not going to make, make it for this um, and I'm not going to buy fresh. Well I is finding it anyway when you're on the cut. So I'm not going to do too much. And um, this is so, probably every other thing you shouldn't do. You should have your spaghetti on, but you know what? It's a lot easier to cook in a regular saucepan if you break it in half. And it's for me, so I'll have it how I like it. It doesn't have to be two miles long for me. So anyway, that's uh, that's my spaghetti. I don't know why I just put it in there. It hadn't come to the boil yet. Oh dear, I'm uh, forgetting it today, but it's almost there. It's almost at the boil. Whilst uh, I was away, I've done all the dishes. They're all cleaned up from earlier. All the stuff, all the mess I had. This is the only pan I have left. That's the pan that the, the um, meatballs are in. So I'm only doing a little bit of spaghetti here. Some people will add a drop of olive oil to stop it sticking together. I'm just going to keep stirring it. That way it won't stick together. And the olive oil does sort of, I don't know, flavour the spaghetti a bit. Which I don't mind actually, but I'm just not doing that today. 
Well, it's just come back to the boil never I come back to the boil never let it boil you in the first place. I'm sort of rushing now because I'm off out very shortly. I'm going to the Greyhound pub here at Hawkesbury Junction for a pint of my good friend Steve Tyrrell on Narrowboat Precious Jets. Who also has a YouTube channel, of course. I'm just moving them around to make sure they don't stick together. And I'm going to do now what I do when I cook potatoes, rice, and everything like that. Put the lid on, let the lid get hot, and turn it off, and we'll come back in 10 minutes. Well, my spaghetti now I think is cooked. Let's uh, strain that off and place it up. One plate, some worms. I'm not a spaghetti fan, I'm not a pasta fan at all, so I very rarely ever eat pasta. Hence, you can see there, not very much. So, here's my meatballs. Look, look at that. I'm gonna have four, Let's get a little bit more sauce. Look at that rich, thick sauce so there we have it my spaghetti and meatballs and um i normally finish this off with a little bit of a uh, fresh parsley over the top but as i don't have any i'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of dried parsley you could of course finish it off also with a little bit of um Parmesan cheese or any of those hard Italian cheeses. I don't have any um, Italian cheese, so it's not getting any. So anyway, I guess we ought to try it. One reason why I never worry about chopping the spaghetti up when I cook it, I always break it up anyway to eat it. I should have got a knife as well as a fork out, but there you go. Some people say if you cook the meatballs too long, or you're dry in the middle, they're not. I fried them off and seared all the moisture in. And they're just full of flavour now. You've got all that sauce flavour on the outside, and all that herby flavour I put into those meatballs to start off with. Mm. As I say, it's not a sort of dish I cook very often. I'm not a spaghetti fan. But that's one darn good spaghetti and meatballs. Mm. Try a little bit more. Just, uh, just try the sauce on its own here. Mm. Very rich, extremely tomatoey, with a good kick of those herbs in the background, but actually right through it. So I hope you enjoyed that little recipe. Don't forget Beer stream two weeks time. No, that's a lie. Don't forget beer stream next week. And I've told you what beers we're going to have. Uh, so yeah, join me next Wednesday at eight o'clock for the beer stream. A big thank you goes out of course to all my Patreon, PayPal, super thanks, channel members, and everybody for watching the channel. Hope you enjoyed that one. It's quite an easy meatball recipe and extremely delicious. As you know, I try and keep things simple in the kitchen. Or well, the ingredients bring it all together and show how to cook it simply. And that's another simple dish. Has spent two hours on the stove in total. But that's besides the point. So get on and make that one. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And that just leaves me to say, thank you very much for watching. Trevor out. Now I'll go and get ready to go to the pub.